The Brumder Mansion. Why, that's in Milwaukee. Hi, Mike. Oh, hi, Rich Evans. Why, it looks like we're both wearing the same Halloween costume this year. Horrible white trash that can't dress themselves. And you even smell like a dumpster. Way to go fully with the costume. <laughs> what are we doing today, Mike? Well, this year we're gonna downplay the Halloween element a little. We're still gonna watch some scary movies, but we're not getting in costume. We're not uh, gonna, gonna try to scare each other or anything. You remember what happened last year? I certainly do. So, Rich, what is it like to spend your birthday cutting into a VHS tape with a saw? Well, it's kind of like, oh, 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 God! 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 Nothing wild like that's going to happen this year. Nothing scary, nothing haunted, anything like that. So, uh, Rich, what movies are we going to watch today? Well, because it's Halloween, I was thinking we could watch some comedies. So our first movie was going to be Cool Dog. Okay, can I see a copy of that? Uh, yeah, yeah, here, let me get Cool Dog for it. I'm sure Cool Dog is very scary on a technical level, but um, we need a horror film. Let's watch these movies then that are sitting right here on the shelf. All right. Well, okay. The first movie up is called The Item. Well, I'm going to start reading the quotes on the back oh, first. Okay. Uh, fantastically fun, raw, savvy, uber cool film. Ain't it cool news? Uh, it is not, uh, the quote is not attributed to Harry Knowles. Do you remember his Kickstarter three years ago that he did nothing to complete? Yeah. What the f <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> They're flying, apparently. <laughs> Gliding. What the shit? Are they on roller <laughs> <laughs> What is happening? They're <laughs> all ghosts. Our second quote, uh, a blood-drenched Tarantino. Like, oh, Tarantino. Tar yeah. I thought that might have been someone from Toronto, like someone who made a film. A, a Tarantino? A Tarantino. Type caper. Crossed with alien. Okay. <sighs> Take a good look, motherfucker! Oh no, sparks! Are they now going to cut to them being five feet apart? <laughs> yeah, that's a naked gun gag, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's a, this is a naked gun gag waiting to happen. These guys are terrible criminals. And bad shots. Yeah. What? Oh, uh, no, stop it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. you. They could yeah. He's going to... Oh God! They couldn't film a real gun. <laughs> they didn't know how. They couldn't figure out how. This is hyper style. A Sundance groundbreaker. I don't think this ever played at Sundance. Maybe someone broke it on the ground outside of Sundance. Uh, that, and this is a box office magazine movie and film reviews. You worked with each other since you were kids. I think that's great. Did he, he pour Jack Daniels into, into flutes? Glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's weird. Well, the the lady criminal was doing that with. I want to punch Lady this too. movie. <laughs> I, I want to punch the movie. Yeah. I'm going to read the back of the box now. Four felons are contacted by an anonymous client via the internet. That sounds horribly unexciting. Are you following along? Yes. Their instructions: go to a remote location. Pick up a sealed box and keep it safe for 24 hours. The reward, over a million dollars. Why do they That's need felons box. to do this? Because they're very reliable and trustworthy. Seems simple enough. However, upon getting it back to their apartment, oh no. <laughs> so, so college kids make this. 
to their apartment that no doubt has uh, movie posters all over the wall and pizza boxes and beer cans everywhere. Their curiosity gets the better of them and they decide to investigate their package. I forgot where it was. Their curiosity gets the better of them, and they decide to investigate their package. Why is this man laughing so <laughs> When they investigate their package, they discover that they have unleashed, unleashed a deadly creature from their package. You know, you're just throwing those packages in there now. And none of them are getting out alive. From their package? <laughs> No, no, no! Don't. <laughs> That's weird. I guess you can. Oh my! Oh! God. <laughs> so the penis tail had some use after all. Oh. What? What? This is what we're doing, huh? Yeah. This is. <laughs> no, honey, no! Oh no! Not for this movie! <laughs> Don't do it for this movie! Oh no! <laughs> What's up next, Rich? Well, our next film is called The Crawlers. Uh, yeah, there's a lady, a scantily clad lady with something on her. Is that, are those like snakes or? Uh, okay, the back of the box says The Crawlers, a new kind of monster. A living, lethal organism that strikes its victims without moving. No one can stop the crawlers. So don't they crawl? How do they stop their victims without moving if they crawl? Warning. Is this a movie about dangerous babies? They, they, I, I read that wrong. babies? I read that wrong. It's a lethal organism that strikes its victims without warning. I don't know how I read that as moving. Crawling looks very similar to warning. Yeah. Jack service station. I'm dying of thirst. It's hot. You from around here? Yeah. Why would you ask someone on a bus if they're from around here? <laughs> are you from on the bus? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> do you, do you live you, on a bus? Are you from bus? You're sort of in the middle of being anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they just got on the bus together recently. Rich, I made my point. <laughs> Don't counter it, please. <laughs> That's it. That's all it says. I'm actually done reading the back of the box. Oh, really? It's two sentences. Oh, my gosh. Well, There's some pictures. There's some people playing around with a, a, a rubber monster tentacle. Okay. And then there's a woman carrying what looks like a... It looks like a cow udder inside of a backpack. Who, all right. That's what it looks like to me. You got, you got me interested so far. Now they're having a low-speed car chase. <laughs> oh, the heart-pounding actions. There's <laughs> really all over it. Uh, no, they're actually on a road instead of a parking lot right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he's got the ball! He's going to get the 40. <laughs> oh, no, oh, oh, no, oh, 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 <laughs> and yeah, it's a movie. Now who's the director of this it. film? Uh, Martin Newland. And I am told that this film has the alternate title of Troll 3. Well, that's very interesting. But it's not the same people that made Troll 2. And Troll 2 is a sequel to Troll 1 and has nothing to do with Troll 1 no. either. No, so you may as well just call it like, you know, Alien 4. It, what, or The Crawlers. Or the crawlers. This is this is Predators Four. Oh. Is is calling your movie Troll something the the title equivalent of uh, Alan Smithy? <laughs> you know, just yeah. We'll call it Troll something, yeah. and we'll make some money back. Hey Gordon, I found another one over here. 
<laughs> Gordon, help him. Grandpa! Grandpa! Other grandpa, help! Oh no. Oh no, they got Gordon. <laughs> grandpa slowly rolled up. Uh, Don't knock my glasses off! <laughs> Oh my god, what was that? It sounded like thunder. Maybe there's a storm brewing. Hmm. What? Well, we had to come crawling back to the movies after watching the crawlers. It was so exhausting. Ha 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 ha. Let's watch one of these eight movies on this eight movie pack. Well, we have eight movies. One of them is bound to be all right. We're watching Bloodlock. Our next film, Rich, our third film of the evening is called Blood Lock. Uh, and as you can see, it's a very tiny picture of it. Um, we've randomly picked this one off the same Completely movie randomly, yes. And uh, there's a man who is uh, trying to have a, a bowel movement who also is a vampire. And a lock. He has a lock. Don't Did he even line the screws up evenly. No. Nope. This is shoddy craftsmanship. Don't bang this, too the, hard. The blood lock was quickly made. The door <laughs> handle. It's so terrible. Yeah, the handle's just a screen mm -hmm. door handle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then the cheapest ones I could get. Yeah. You didn't want to go for the fancy one. <laughs> no. no. And she can't hit it too hard with the screwdriver because it's just hot glued on there. Yeah. So the screwdriver broke. Yeah. That's fine. Fuck you, blood lock. <laughs> Wobble, Damn it. Wobble. Breaks her screwdriver, but her hands can dent the door. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Bloodlock, why? Well, you know, life goes on. Um, so are you going to go to the grocery store and talk to your locksmith about that door? Yeah, did you want to come? I'll pass. I think I'm going to make some phone calls and, you know, just chill out. Amazing <laughs> acting. It's so realistic. Locksmith comes in, some old man looks like Jimmy Stewart. Well, what you got here is a blood one. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, not a very good one at that. <laughs> Let me just get my tools. When Barry and Christine move into a new house, they discover a strange locked door in the basement. A door that hides a secret. A terrible secret. What's inside the locked door in the basement, Rich? What do you think? Uh, um, um, another blood lock that they can put on a different door in the house? Is the actual movie inside the door? Like they open it up and they go, oh no, that's what we made? That'd be, that'd be kind of interesting though, so probably not. Oh, oh, oh my god. god. Wow! Oh, god. And then it just made it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Holy shit. Beauty. Do you think it's just like a vampire? Uh, like a vamp they locked a vampire in somebody's do we, basement. Do we know for sure it's a vampire? Well, there, there's what appears to be a vampire pooping on the cover of the you box. Sh that lo it looks like a Satan to me. Are you sure there's not like a Satan in the door? All right, let's go watch Blood Lock. It's not gonna stop him. It's gonna walk around the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very easy for her to move it. I don't know. He's not made that well, well, that was Bloodlock. It sure was. Uh, all right, let's go talk about these movies. Oh no! I think the power went out. Where are we gonna talk about these movies? I know where we could talk about these movies. In a haunted mansion. <gasps> Used to not being in the rain anymore. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. 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 Well, here we are in Milwaukee's famous haunted mansion. The Brumder Mansion. Yeah, that's right. They were kind enough to let us in out of the rain, and coincidentally, they had copies of all three movies that we watched earlier tonight. Huh. And what a perfect place to have our discussion 
of Halloween films in a haunted mansion. Would anyone like some Halloween? No. No. Well, let's talk about our first film. Um, our first film was called The Item. Something is dying to get out. Uh, that was us out of the room. It really wasn't dying to get out. It was let out mm -hmm. and reluctantly came out. Josh, why don't you tell us all about The Item? Okay. Well, in The Item, there's a group of uh, hapless uh, crooks. I, there, there are going to be a lot of question marks at the end of <laughs> sentences when I'm describing this movie. Uh, they go into the desert to receive uh, something that they were going to... They're basically middlemen for something. They don't know what. They just they don't, don't know what. Do either. It was a, a mysterious man with money or a, a scientist from the future with a, with a lady in there his There is a, <laughs> a scientist passing, using them to pass along this item to someone with money? For some reason. But they gave the scientist money for the item. Yep. Wait. Yes. Okay. Don't know. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Someone has hired these people to retrieve something from, uh, 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 was it Matthew or Gunner from Nelson? It was Matthew. It was Matthew? Okay, so it was Matthew from Nelson and his uh, other blonde scientist sidekick lady, who stays in the car mostly. Um, but then all of a sudden, the scientist has a change of heart and decides that he wants to keep his thing. Uh, so they kill him. <sighs> I've gotta pee. And then they go back to the hideout, which is the most annoying crook's girlfriend's place. It is full of terrible art. And you better get used to this location. Uh, that's true, that's where the rest of the movie happens, except for outside. Fuck you hard! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Damn you! Yay! Actually, let me put outside in quotes. <laughs> outside of the it's like an alley set. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the room scene when he throws the football <laughs> and it then is. falls over for no reason. Yeah, it's more. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's less realistic <laughs> than the Tommy Wiseau. Let me put location. that back up there. I don't want to hold this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's fine. Yeah. Meanwhile, they open up the case and it's this penis monster uh, in bondage gear. Uh, which you saw earlier briefly under glow light. Oh, that's right. Or, yeah, or, the yeah, magical glow, glow lights. Yeah, glow they have to lights. illuminate with glow sticks that they bought at a dollar store. Because style. <laughs> to illuminate the, the monster that they also bought at a dollar store. Lots of kung fu whip sound effects, mm -hmm. people gliding, mm -hmm. and, and edgy uh, dialogue. I'm completely convinced that in our culture, having a lot of cash is the most avant-garde thing a person can do. Really? Yeah. I mean, definitely money is art. And drag queens getting shot. I'll be honest, I didn't pay any attention to what they were saying. That's for the best. So, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, but just for the record, I never had an erection while serving at the altar of God. <laughs> none, of, none of it matters because act three involves them all bitching at each other in the apartment and then the alien thing uh, one by one messing with them psychologically until they die or get killed by each other. No one will ever fuck me again. Not even my wife. Oh, I love you. I gave her a ring. I gave her a house. My kids. She gave her my kids. Wait, my kids are afraid. <laughs> really? Really? Uh, and then uh, once everybody else is dead, the alien and the girlfriend have sex, and then the screen goes black and there's a gunshot, and then someone's pounding on the door while the credits happen. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Because <laughs> it looks cool. No, it didn't. Well, it's important to note when this movie was made. This was 1999, I believe the credits said, right? I think it was 98. 98, 99. Um, this was post Reservoir Dogs, post Pulp Fiction. So who's the name of the filmmaker? The name of the, the he's some fucking asshole. So that people um, might look him up. The man who made this film, The Item, is Dan Clark. This is a the the quintessential post Tarantino movie, mm -hmm. where everybody is a badass uh, a thug, a badass uh, I don't know a, a assassin, whatever they're supposed to be, some sort of ruffians, and they talk in in witty pop culture dialogue. Oh. And Dan Clark wrote himself as the coolest fucking guy. 
<laughs> oh, of course. He just went to 110% cool. Oh, I hate this fucking guy so much. You should. I think this guy thought he was clever by mixing the genre. Doing a twist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by saying, we'll you know what would be really it. great if Pulp Fiction met Alien? Yeah. You know, and then, because mm. that's, I mean, that's even what the, the quote says on the back. And no. I get the I get the Pulp Fiction. I get the we're cool, we're hip uh, criminals, blah blah blah. But we were all baffled by the presentation of the creature. Yeah. To, at first, it looked like an Inside Out puppet, and then the voice is comical. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's just some guy going, "Hey, it's me." My pet sweats. It rubs and makes sores. Yeah. Now, and we were wondering, is this supposed to be funny? When you have to wonder, is this supposed to be funny or scary? You're not doing a very good job as a filmmaker. <laughs> Uh, what what does everybody think? Like I, I I I don't know. I don't have an answer. The tone, really, the tone of the movie was just annoying. That was the yeah. tone of yeah. the film. Yeah. So that also was annoying. That there's mm -hmm. this thing and it's just and that's fucking annoying. Just like everybody else in that fucking movie. What would have been cooler is if they had never shown the item, and then just had it be all psychological and yeah. in their head and stuff like that. And then it would have been a little bit like you know, a little bit more uh, like character driven. Mm -hmm. It could have it could have given the characters something more to work with instead of them having to stare at this like um, bald caterpillar. Yeah. You know, with big <laughs> eyes. A, a simple well, trick would have been just a brain. Or I think we said a brain in, mm -hmm. in the case. You or, can't go wrong with a brain in a jar. Oh, well, no. I mean, okay, that's too I mean, silly. Or even just a slug no. that was telepathic. <laughs> Just some ugly slug that was telepathic. Sure. It didn't move. It just yeah. maybe slimed around a little. The fact that it had a puppet mouth yeah. Yeah. made it look like a Muppet. Or you don't hear what it's saying to the people, but you hear the people reacting to it like yeah. they can hear it. So it is more psychological. But even still, don't even show it. Yeah. Who cares? We don't even need to see it. Although ever. I will say the fact that they show it is what saves most of this movie. Uh, you know, unintentionally, of yeah. course. But like, because we're cutting from these stupid scenes of these like hitmen pointing guns at each other. Everybody's pointing guns at each other all the time. Then you cut to what's going on in the other room, and it's one of the ladies talking to the puppet. And it's like, hey, what's going on out there, guys? But yeah, that's the thing, though. If, if if it had been like a psychological thing where there's like a slug with telepathic, you know, abilities, nobody would have fucked the puppet. <laughs> that's all we got out of this movie because it was bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. That lady's fucking a puppet. The end. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, and your art? It's obvious. Yeah, this is look at look at how stylistic I can be. Look at these and we, we were wondering if, if that's those scenes where the characters are sliding around, like what that influence was. Yeah. It wasn't Tarantino, but it had to be something. It so, felt like 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 a like a Japanese or Korean movie or like, like a Hong a, Kong like something. One of their kind of like a Dracula movies or like their vampire movies. Something like vampires that. Vampires yeah. move fast in that's those true. the Hong Kong films. Or don't they jump? Some some jump, Don't they jump and some straight move up and down. Yeah. yeah, some jump. And it's adorable, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, there's the fast. <laughs> Mike has no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> but there was that, and then there was the fact that when Alex gets shot, um, yeah, you leave that there. He explodes like you know four quarts of blood out his back. Just yeah, like, that's <laughs> very Japanese movie. Very much. Yeah. Oh, oh, he died finally. Finally. Yay. With the, the yeah. 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 And speaking of the item and the cover, oh yeah, can we sue Artisan for releasing that cover? No. I mean, how misleading. Oh, yeah. It's I mean, like a that, reptilian yeah. eye. Yeah. That, that, and that's, that's a classic like that. case of we're, we're selling the box, not the movie. Yeah. yeah. If we could sue Artisan, we would be suing Canon Films over and over and over again. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say The Amazing Bulk was a better uh, made movie. No. 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 I'll, I'll say 95% of this movie made me angry. Like more angry than any movie we've watched on Best of the Worst. Nobody shoots. Uh. But I'm gonna say those last five minutes did a lot to redeem it. That was some weird perverted Frank Henenlotter shit when the girl started fucking the puppet. Mm. That, that was genuinely entertaining. The item is a passive aggressive dick. That, Literally. Yeah. Uh, that just wants to make everybody unhappy. Yeah. Thanks, item. 
So he was symbolic of, of the movie itself. Ooh. Wow. The item was, was a penis head and so was the director. Yeah. Time more wine. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Fuck them. 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 Well, on to our next film. Give it to me. What's happening? It's far away. It? It's crawling over to me. I got it. On to our next film, The Crawlers, uh, AKA Troll 3, mm -hmm. AKA Creepers. Creepers, mm -hmm. AKA Contamination Point 7. Yes. Wow, good job. Thank you. So you. This is the second movie the same year by the same director to be called Troll 3. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't realize it was wow. the same year. Yep, same year, same director. <laughs> damn it. Neither of them have anything to do with trolls. Jay, tell us all about The Crawlers. Uh, the Crawlers is a, a girl comes back to her hometown after being away for a long time, and she discovers that the local uh, nuclear power plants or nuclear waste facility, whatever it is, they've been dumping barrels of nuclear waste into the woods and it's contaminated the branches and vines are now nuclear. Oh no! And they, they awkwardly fall into frame and slap people around. And it's up to our small band of, of boring, worthless characters to stop this from happening. But that's basically the whole movie. There's a sad old grandpa Aww. with a dog. Uh, Chester. Chester. There's a lot of memorable moments from this, uh, this gem here. No, the, I, I will say this couple. is the worst <laughs> premise for a movie. It's the worst villain. The worst sort of threat is just rubber vines. Well, well the general idea is uh, old rich white man who runs the nuclear power plant gets money from the government to dispose of toxic waste and in cahoots with the police decide to dump the toxic waste in the woods. Mm -hmm. Yes. We don't want him making a connection to the power plant. We have to be very careful. You bet. Keep an eye on him. Got it. Now, they, he eventually kills himself. Yeah. Because he's found out by the townsfolk who <laughs> confront him in his office. Yeah. We know that you embezzled funds intended for the toxic waste disposal, and you took the radioactive waste and dumped it somewhere in the forest. We're going to find it. You better tell us <laughs> the waste site is We're going to find it. I used to play high school football before I hurt my knee. Now I'm acting. Do you want me to cooperate? <laughs> And unfortunately, he doesn't realize that they're dumb enough to just get themselves killed anyway. <laughs> That's really a bummer for him. Yeah, he yeah. would have been fine. The witnesses kill themselves, essentially, but even though we, we, we figured out he might have just gotten a small fine, he still commits suicide. They're never going to get me. But it's never explained. I guess this is just leftover toxic waste from a nuclear po uh, power plant, but it's somehow Instead of uh, turning, uh, you know, rabbits into uh, monsters or deer or what, it just specifically vines. Yes. Well, there, there, there Why? doesn't seem to be any other like animals in that forest. There aren't any animals in there. It's just trees. Yeah, that's all there is. You don't see anything else in there. Yeah, it's true. Trees don't come alive. Yeah. Well, they do if you if you expose them to nuclear lower waste. Are really that mer many l lengthy vines in um, American North American forests? Isn't that more of like a, a South American? Uh, I mean, I'm not a, a, an expert, but so you're not like the young child in the movie. What kind is it? Oh, it's yellow oak. These leaves suck. <laughs> so, howdy do he's into it. <laughs> yeah, he, he was an expert in leaves and he provided no help whatsoever. Nobody provided any help. Everybody in this movie started Except dumb for, and ended dumb. Didn't he say something like, this is bullshit or something like that, <laughs> didn't true. he? It was say the one something? swear word in the whole movie. Oh yeah, he said holy shit when the town whore died. <laughs> holy shit! Oh yeah! <laughs> the best character in the yeah. movie. The most compelling character, yeah. easily. Slot with a heart of gold. Yes, she yeah. She wanted to help, but she fell in a grave and was choked to death by cotton. She 
She should have said, vines that, that are alive? What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> Wow! She what? gets sex all the time. Splinters. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't gotta go to that bar all the time. Well, the one girl, she uh, is on the bus with a, who I guess turned out to be our main character. We didn't realize it at the time. We thought the other girl was our main we character. We thought the girl on the bus uh, at the beginning was the main character, but she gets off the bus to go to the bathroom, and then the bus just takes off without her. Not to go to the bathroom. The bus driver goes to the bathroom. She needs a drink. Oh, that's right. But either way, the bus takes off without her. Shit! He left without me. And then she goes up to Sad Grandpa and his dog, Chester? Chester. Lord Chester. AKA Wolfie, because he's always chasing the ladies, yep. which doesn't make any sense. Hey, fella, what's your name? Well, his name is Chester, but I call him Wolfie because he's always chasing girls. <laughs> uh, and and uh, old Sad Grandpa says, someone else will come along and give you a ride. And someone does, and it turns out to be a, 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 a raper. Come on. Hey. I ain't gonna hurt you. Get off me, you I'm gonna stick ah! to you. Get off me, you pig! But he gets away, and then that lady oh, gets they... killed by the vines, yeah. and the rapist gets away. He's got a real long butt. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Butts were a lot What's longer. Wrong? What's wrong, little lady? You look long in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> I think the point Jay is trying to make is that, um, Usually in a, in a horror movie, the, the rape victim would escape while she is rescued inadvertently by the killer, which is the vines. But yes. in, instead, the poor, almost rape victim gets yeah. killed by the vines while the rapist gets away scot-free. And then the vines go, to, go on to kill grandpa, sad grandpa, sad. and his dog. They kill the dog first. Yeah. Because yeah. the dog, you know, is, is concerned that something is happening in the woods, as many dogs would be. And then... <laughs> What? Why is that funny? It's kind of true. Dogs are concerned about the woods. Uh, but so he gets he gets off his leash and, uh, you know, goes chasing up, in, up into the woods and the vines kill him. And then poor grandpa finds his beloved dog. Oh my God. Buries him it's next to the gas thing. station. It's the saddest thing. All the stuff with sad grandpa is so depressing. Can we talk about sad grandpa's eventual death, which is <laughs> the most he's... awkward death Ever. Well, we thought it was going to be a suicide. We thought he it, was going to kill It's himself. adding insult to injury, because sad grandpa, he's all alone. He knocks his hat off the wall. Drinking. He's drinking heavily. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. And then he gets a gun, and we thought this was it. We were like, this movie's going in a completely different direction now. He's gonna shoot himself in the face. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, no! Oh, 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 no. God. oh, no, please. Oh, no, please. <laughs> Is he gonna shoot himself with a musket? <laughs> it's his gun from when he served in the oh. Civil War. <laughs> But instead, he, he leaves the gas station, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, to go get revenge on the vines that killed his dog. We he's, don't know. He, he's going to get whoever killed his dog. And then I think he just falls down. <laughs> uh, he trips and shoots his, his, himself in the face. It's supposed to be that the branches uh, come up and grab him, but it just looks like he falls over. Come out of there, I'll shoot you. Well, this is what happens when you make a movie that is just about a town full of grandpas. It was. There were so many grandpas in there. There were town. so many grandpas in this movie. Rum and Coke. Easy on the Coke. The speed limit was 35 in every, on every road in that town, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> there's the grandpa bartender, and then when the the lady of the night when she. I don't know what her name is. It, it was slut. Okay, so <laughs> when when she's like, hey, you wanna buy me a drink? And he says, no. And he gets up, there's that crabby That's grandpa. Right. Do, do, let's like, not forget no. grandpa that gets killed by the vines at the end. Remember grandpa with the glasses? Other grandpa. He's like, I can't let my glasses fall off. <laughs> They make the most, like, like the, 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 the promiscuous lady makes the most, like, difference on the plot mm -hmm. yeah. of anybody in this movie. Yeah. Oh my god, did you see that? What? The camera just moved. 
Which one? Your camera? Yeah, it just moved. Shut the fuck up. Uh, the vines. Vines and toxic waste don't go together for me. No. They just no. don't go. Vines, like uh, like a, a horror, like uh, Evil Dead, um, something like that. The, the forest comes alive. Yeah. It's, uh, it's ventral. Uh, it's but that wasn't the whole movie either. That was one sequence in Evil Dead, and it was very effective. But you don't want a whole movie of rubber vines flopping around. You could make a movie about a forest coming to life and killing people, I guess. But, but it, it feels has like it should be supernatural. Supernatural as opposed ah, to, yeah, sure, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Supernatural okay. over uh, sci uh, scientific, because Toxic Waste, I think, Toxic Avenger, I think Mutations. Sure. I think more biological, even though plants are biological, but I think more yeah. monsters. Yeah. yeah, okay. And uh, vines, no. You're thinking, you're thinking of like the, the, the guy that gets uh, hit by the car on Robocop. Oh yeah, sure. That's yeah. what you're, you Yeah, know. toxic waste. Cla classic 1980s, we're scared of nuclear power. Well, it's clear that the filmmakers don't know anything about uh, toxic waste or the effects of it because the end of the movie is the entire town. That was the 1980s. That's the entire town. They're coming together and they're going to take care of these toxic barrel wastes by just touching them with their bare hands and rolling them, rolling them around. around. Yeah, they're clearly leaking in the first place or else there wouldn't be a vine problem. Yes. <laughs> so let little Jimmy in his baseball cap roll them into a pit. Yeah. And then bury them. And then bury them. Well, first what happens is the, they, they show up with the helicopter, they find all of them, and then a vine reaches up, pulls down the helicopter, and then it turns in, it magically turns into a toy helicopter and then blows up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so we have one second of a toy helicopter. <laughs> Yeah! Oh, we need a freeze frame on that toy helicopter. Yeah. That was adorable. Wow. That was beautiful. <laughs> the main thing about this movie is that it's the second one I really watched that's just fucking dumb. Yeah. Just dumb. This had a little more charm to it, it though, because it wasn't trying to be cool. No, that's true. And, and it was clear at the end that the whole reason this movie was made is that whoever the filmmaker was, he lived near a forest that was going to be torn down. So they had all these great shots of the bulldozers tearing down the trees, and they said, how can we make a movie around this? This was more genuine. Yeah. So yeah, but it's still fucking I give stupid. It, oh, sure. <laughs> but I give it more of a pass than that. Yeah. Although this on the cover here, that never happens. It does. No. It does there, there's no sexuality in this movie. But other that's than, not her. That's not. Long. It's not her technically. But the when when the the town horror falls into a grave yeah. and vines start going around her, it's it's she's almost. It's similar to that. Similar. It's misleading though. We we had discussed that that cover would not happen anywhere close to that. And yeah. Close enough. Okay. I will give the cover this. It was more accurate than that one. Yes. Than the it was item. more accurate yes. than the That's item. Very oh, yeah. True. yeah. Most inaccurate, inaccurate cover of the evening goes to the item. Most accurate cover of the evening goes to Bloodlock. Oh, yeah. Ah! Ah! Well, speaking of Bloodlock, um, our third film of the evening is, is called Bloodlock. Bloodlock. A William Victor Schottenfreude film. <laughs> How did you not come up with that yesterday? <laughs> I don't know, I just saw it. Yeah, uh, starring Deborah Gordon, uh -huh. Greg Biamonte. Love him. Uh, uh, Karen Fox, mm. and of course the famous Ashley Gallo. Yes! A-lister lineup of celebrities and um, and and stars, just just top brass, top of the line actors, top, top notch. Um, Who is the cinematographer for this film? It has to be someone. Right? I don't know. The, the text is so small it's unreadable. Bloodlock. Death is not the end. It's a transition. Oh, so this is a spiritual movie. It's not. No, it's about a vampire locked in someone's basement behind a sheet metal door. Or rather, a door where sheet metal is hot glued to it. <laughs> uh, Jesse, that sounds pretty spiritual to me. Um, before we get into the film, you've got to describe Bloodlock to our audience, and this is one of your favorite films. Bloodlock is a movie about a couple, and um, the couple has the lady sister. So three people move into this new home. They don't know what is behind the door, but there is a blood lock on the door, so they can't get in the door. Well, in the meantime, there's creepy neighbors across the street. The wife um, is out uh, locating a locksmith. So one day when the husband leaves for work, 
and the sister is there because she's having an affair with the husband and then they hold her hostage as well. Then the husband shows up. You could have just said it's about a vampire. <laughs> Basically, uh, this old sadistic couple wants to get behind this door because in this basement of the suburban house lives a very old vampire. And they want to get him out for some reason. No, no she has cancer. And, oh, um, she wants eternal life. Yeah, they she both wants do. She yeah. has cancer? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Wait yeah. a second. She wants to be, and I'm quoting the movie, mortal. Look at me. I'll grant you mortality. Uh, mortality? I have mortality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we should say that we refer to the vampire as Bloodlock. Oh, hello, hello now, Bloodlock! <laughs> rock, rock, rock. What? Because <laughs> he's just like vamp generic vampire. No, this is Bloodlock. He's Bloodlock. Uh, Bloodlock uh, <laughs> finds a girl in a park. Cosmo? Cosmo? Cosmo! What? Clyde Mo? Chester? Cosmo. Woo! Woo! Bloodlock? And a guy who is a policeman getting gas. And someone on the courthouse steps for it's some like a reason. senator. He was walking out of the state capitol. We're giving no. They gave up on trying to give information about the victims at that point. Yeah. yeah. Here's a guy. I well, I feel like there's two important things that we're neglecting to talk about. The fart jar. For, well, first one Where is the bloodlock. We we barely talked about <laughs> the the bloodlock. The actual bloodlock. We barely vampire. talked about the door. Okay. Yeah. The door is the centerpiece of the movie. It's the center. It's the setup for the entire thing. A mysterious door in the basement. And that's when you know this movie was made for $5. Yeah. yeah. When you see the door. And it's terrible. There's a... Oh, when you have to put your children's artwork on yeah. it <laughs> the, to make it spooky. The child's artwork uh, you are referring to is a an Amish symbol? Yes. Of, of, uh, Do they say Amish? They yeah, say the Amish. sister recognizes it for no reason. Because the Amish are known for, for fighting vampires. Okay. The sure. Amish are known for warding off vampires. This yeah. is well known. This is a well known thing. Are you making Amish. that up right now? Oh, they don't like the sun and the Amish don't use electricity. <gasps> that makes no sense. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> So anyways, did, did the Amish make uh, sad grandpa's gravestone in the crawlers that you know, we didn't talk about? The, the Amish made this movie. That's why it looks so bad. Okay, all right. They had okay. very, very... They don't understand. They, they had uh, naturally made video cameras okay. that were made out of made... wood and corn stalks. And that's why the picture looks so bad at the bloodline. And then uh, naturally made... Uh... <laughs> oh, I got a chuckle from my job. Just have a sleep over What have we got here? I suspect the same as you. We're all looking for the vampire. You're the one that unleashed this thing. Every death, every single death has been because of you. <laughs> Wait, how many deaths? Every, every single every death. death. There, there, is, there are some technical details to this film that, that are not the best. Yeah. Mainly the acting and the props and uh, the, the cinematography. And script. <laughs> but, um, uh, the, the uh, <laughs> well, I did. I did have before we started talking about the the bloodlock, the actual door. Yeah. The second thing I wanted to bring up that we haven't really discussed as much as we should is the deadly fart jar. Deadly, deadly farts. farts. The deadly fart jar is on on the nightstand next to the holy. The, I think it's unrelated. Okay, because they have the holy water and um, something else, uh, garlic, <laughs> right? And. Um, I think the deadly fart jar is not supposed to be a vampire fighting thing. I think it's just what was in the house. When they shot the movie, yeah. Now, spoilers for those of you that plan to watch Bloodlock. Don't. We need to talk about the ending. The ending. The twist ending. Right? Okay. The twist number two. Okay, guys. Is I'm this gonna, related to the deadly farts? It yeah. is, it is, in a I way. Yeah. I don't know where we're okay. going. Yeah, okay. I don't know where you're going with Here that, but go. go ahead. Um, so basically, we find out that the wife character has imagined the whole second half of the movie. The whole second act is all in her head and she's 
supposedly on medication. She's on crazy medication, yeah. But this made me so angry because she dreamt this whole thing up and she, the man of her dreams, the man that she wants to spend her life with now that she found out that her husband it's, had been cheating on her with her sister. It's all down in her brain's heart. She dreamt up a guy who has a deadly farts jar on his <laughs> nightstand. Who also wore a shirt that said, Mullet's rule. Yes, Mullet's exactly. rule. And lived and, in grandma's house. And when he dies in, in her brain, because it's all in her brain, when he mm -hmm. dies, she goes back to his house and she smells the Mullet's rule <laughs> shirt <laughs> and is, is crying and is upset. Mm -hmm. She wanted to get a whiff of that Drakkar Noir. <laughs> Jesse, I want to say two things about that. Number one, she had met the locksmith before what is potentially the dream part happened. Sure. So like the dream part is like- But she imagines the fart jar. <laughs> sure. But the locksmith at least is a real person. So I want sure. to like, she's oh, sure. imagining details for him like mullets rule t-shirts and fart jars, but maybe she just feels like he's that kind of guy. Secondly, what kind of hack filmmakers throw in a fucking it was all a dream at the end? Like what a bullshit. Move. No, I totally agree. What a bullshit move. Clearly, complete hacks make their film end. That Absolutely. is all a dream. It's which the is the worst what, way you could end a movie. Which is what Bloodlock did. Yeah. Um, Actually, no, it's the, uh, as Jack accurately pointed out, it's the second worst way you could end a movie. The worst way is to cut to black and hear a gunshot. That's right. I did with a gunshot. I did with a black. gunshot over black. Yes! <laughs> it does not get more film student than oh that. Oh my god! <laughs> well, Bloodlock is seems to be in in uh, in the running for best of the worst here, uh, which is just sickening. <laughs> yeah. Don't drop that box. What is it, Lisa? It's Fraggles. Lisa! Oh, you dummy. You can't. But I guess it's the time of the night when we talk about which film is the best of the worst. And th for a Halloween selection, this is just shit. This is pitiful. It's, this is it's pathetic. Pathetic, yeah. yeah. I didn't even want to think about it again. I kind of forgot that Halloween existed. We got to go with best of the worst. Mm -hmm. I'm going with best of the worst. What was the most entertaining for me? Oh God, I don't know. Can I can I pass this off? Can <laughs> sure. I get some, Would you like can me I to get go? Some, yeah, please go. Okay. I, I need some more time to think about. Do you it. want okay. us, we, maybe we can we can discuss and maybe that'll yeah. come back to would me. Would you like okay. to come, call a friend? I would like to phone a friend. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you want to phone me? Well, well, Here, call me. No, you're in the discussion. I gotta phone somebody. Oh. I gotta call, phone Rich. Call Rich. Okay. You go. Okay. You can call Rich. So, um, the item was terrible. Yes. I did not like it one bit. I, okay, I maybe liked the voice of the puppet. I thought that that was goofy and silly, um, but that was it. And that's not enough to really like a movie, sure. in my opinion. Yeah. There's too many things that were just wrong with it. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Um, Crawlers was charming. I did not hate Crawlers one bit. I really didn't. Okay. I thought it was cute and charming, adorable. Um, Blow Block is my pick, though, for Best of the Worst. Um, it's, I, I find it to be the most entertaining and the most, like, what? I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Oh. Rich. It hasn't been set up. You didn't I... set up your... Nobody leaves you messages? Wow. So, yeah, again, my pick uh, for Best of the Worst is Blood Block with uh, the crawlers in a close second for me. Um, Jay? Uh, as I said before, 95% of the item annoyed me and irritated me and I hated it. Uh, if the last five minutes was its own short film or if that was expanded into a feature about a weird, creepy dick monster that had sex with art students, then it might be amazing, I don't know. Um, it's almost worth seeing for those last few minutes, but most of it I hated. Uh, Crawlers has probably the best, like, classic bad movie moments. Mm. If you talk about, like, the, uh, the, the toy helicopter and then the toy bulldozers and that stuff. 
um, or the the tentacles just flopping around the uh, the vines. So uh, I don't know. Those moments are great, but the movie itself is kind of boring. Bloodlock is also boring, but it has that charm of a, we're gonna make a movie. We don't know how to do it. We're just gonna do it, and it's terrible. Um, but I think I gotta go with crawlers. Okay. I think I have to go with crawlers because of the the toy bulldozers <laughs> and, and the, really all the, the the citizens of this town banding together to push around barrels of toxic waste, mm -hmm. only to die. And then they all yeah. just die, and everything they did was pointless. Yeah. It does have some of those like troll two kind of moments. Yes, but but like much much more watered. Yeah, down. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Most of the movie is not good, but there's those few moments that are are pretty brilliant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, the item, I, I mean, I can see where Jay is coming from in terms of that last five minutes because it very much was, that that felt like someone that was trying something. I mean, and even in terms of like a film student thing, like, yeah, if it was a short film, it felt like it could be like a short student film where it's just like, you know, um, it doesn't have context, but it doesn't need to have context if it's a short film. This is a full length movie. It needed to have context and the context was dumb and annoying. Yes. It had context, but that just made me more angry. Uh, Crawlers, we watched it, was it, that was a Shout Factory DVD? Yes. Yeah, and it was a very nice transfer, and it, it, was, the, it was the movie that we watched that looked the most like a film. Mm -hmm. Bloodlock. It, oh God. You get to say Bloodlock. Well, that makes me laugh. Yeah, the, I, I, the title I just, is amusing. That's, it's, it's, it's a very amusing film. Yeah. And as I said, you know, in the discussions again, and, that, and it, it, it means a lot to me, I guess, in terms of these bad movies that we watch. Bloodlock was guileless. It feels like kind of the, 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 hey, let's put on a show kind of thing. And that counts for a lot in my, in, in my entertainment level. Um, there's also enough throughout Bloodlock to kind of keep you interested, even though it's bad, much more interested than either of the other movies. And that's why I'm picking Bloodlock as best of the worst. Crawlers and Bloodlock are two different generations of incompetence. Yes, Bro that's true. Crawlers yeah. just happen to have nicer film cameras. Yeah, um, it did feel. It, it, I, I, not to interrupt, and I'm sorry. Sure, go ahead. But I really, I, I agree with you very strongly in that Crawlers, had it been made in the '90s or late, or early 2000s, would have looked like Bloodlock. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, and I, and I, you have to take that into consideration with Bloodlock, um, as far as like they just had a cheap video camera, and they're making this. Yeah, it, Crawlers is like, is it, if it looks like a movie and it's completely incompetent, yeah. to me it's more entertaining than if it looks like cheap video and it's completely incompetent. Yes, yeah. But that's me. I, I'm, I hate to be the tie maker, mm. but I think I'm going to go with Crawlers after, okay. after that's okay. weighing that's okay. the pros and cons. I respect that. Uh, it's a tough decision, but I think the, the, the quality of the, the film and the attempt and the complete failure is uh, of making of making a killer vine movie yeah, yeah. Uh, is better than we're making just another low budget vampire movie and i think i hate the people that made that the winner is the, the winner is anyone that hasn't seen any of these movies yeah Aww. definitely the loser is the item and that yeah. that definitely is getting destroyed somehow be kind don't rewind <laughs> <laughs>well, Rich, since the item is a pretentious art film about a monster in a box, what do you think is the most appropriate way to destroy it? Let's burn it on a grill. Okay. Now, this tape does have something I've never, ever seen before, which is a movie melt heat sensor. So we're going to, to pay close attention to that as it cooks on the grill. Yeah. Uh, warning. If dot turns black and heat damage or label tampering is evident, customer must purchase video. So I'm assuming this is from a video store in Phoenix, Arizona? It, yeah, that must be the case. Yeah. Somewhere where it gets hot and they're Le worried about people. Leave it in the car and it melts in the car. I guess, okay. yeah, but okay. uh, if, if that is the case, if that does turn black, you're paying for it, Rich. Well, Rich, we got the grill going. Uh, how do you feel about cooking some burgers? I'm Rich Evans. Of course I want to cook some burgers. Well, all right. All right. And now the P-51 
Peas do resistance. I don't know what that means, but let's put the item on the grill. I think it means piece of shit. Now the movie melt heat sensor is not activating, but it's very clearly melting. Should we see if the sensor goes off when sure, it's facing sure. the grill more? I think it's confirmed now that the tape is melting. Sweet. The sticker has told us so. The movie melt sensor works! After the movie has already melted. <laughs> hey Rich, uh, well, to celebrate, why don't we eat these burgers? Can you go get the cheese? Oh yeah. I'm gonna flip the tape over. <clears throat> oh, it touched the burger a little bit, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Fuck them! 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 Oh my god! Coming along nicely. Yeah. Uh, Rich, can you get the buns? Oh, sure. Thank you. All right, I think everything's ready. Um, hey, Rich. Rich, where are you with those buns? Oh, my God.